All right, welcome to the Barbarak channel. Um, we are going to continue our, you know, um, our exploration of how to do our uh, MIDI pedal for guitar effects, but you can really use it for anything. Uh, what we, what, what I decided to use was to use uh, Raspberry Pi Pico, and that Pico is what we learn is very versatile. It has loads of uh, different uh, uh, per peripherals, lots of different options, functions, and uh, with using MicroPython, everything is easy, right? So what we covered was we covered how to first of all connect to the two different pedals. Uh, we learned something about uh, MIDI interface. Uh, we saw it's pretty, it's pretty easy to use uh, Pico to actually send commands. Uh, we added a, a stomp switch, you know, uh, we added a, a LED, but we also added a support for external pedal, uh, external expression pedal, but also various different, uh, we support also external buttons. Um, so that was all covered there. Uh, at the same time, we covered uh, various libraries. We covered uh, analog to digital conversion, uh, serial interface. And in the last um, installment, we covered NeoPixel. Have a look at that previous one. Uh, I don't have it here, but also uh, RGB um, LED how to use PWM uh, pulse width uh, modulation for that. So there's a lot to it. So this is kind of a uh, spoiler alert. Okay, I spoiled it already. So what we're gonna cover today is, um, we saw that uh, it was very easy, Raspberry Pi Pico um, can be powered from USB, super easy. Now having a pedal that, uh, you know, it's, it's independent, that, you should get away uh, from uh, five volt supply, possibly, depending on your setup, you might not have that uh, USB supply, uh, but more commonly nine volts is uh, what we use in pedals, uh, traditionally. Um, so in this uh, video, on in this installment of our journey, uh, I'm gonna cover um, power supply. So. I'm not going to do anything overly crazy, you know, uh, it's pretty straightforward. All I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the uh, data sheet, right? So, uh, by the way, you don't need to do anything, uh, you know, you don't need to take notes. Uh, I'll have this all in the details, you know, of this video, all the relevant links. Um, we can go to power consumption. But what I really want to see here is this power supply circuit that, that, that we have here. And what does it mean uh, for us? And I would say when doing something like this, you, you should really read, uh, read the data sheet. There's no other way around it. You have to do this. And you can see how this is organized. You can see what is the, you know, uh, buck boost, SMPS, but it, it, it just controls the power uh, and provides power to um, our Pico. Um, it should be super efficient and really depends on, not all boards have the same, uh, let's say chip used, let's call it that way. So some of them might support more than, um, uh, what you call it, it could support higher voltages or lower voltages, but in, in general, we can't make that assumption without looking to datasheet. And especially uh, Raspberry Pi Pico might have various versions. So it might, you know, you, you have to be careful what version you have. But here, you know, uh, it supports 1.8 volts to 5.5. So, you know, it can boost this power or, you know, or it just buck, I suppose. Um, so, you know, it's lots of flexibility. They say now for us, we are, we're going to supply nine volts. 
so this is not going to cut it. it it's outside of this uh range right but if we had you know uh power supply external power supply what we can do is we can go and, and check and you can go and uh as you can see here there's also on chip linear regulator and you can change digital core uh to a different uh, uh, voltage and your you know um digital levels could be different from 3.3 3 .3 volts but assumption is we, we keep 3.3 .3 volts uh throughout um so if we say usb port is not going to be used uh, we should be connecting uh, Pico to V sys to our preferred power source in the range of this. Okay, so it's easy. Now there's a note here: if you want to use it in USB host mode, then we need to deal with this somehow. Uh, I'm not going to get into that uh, for this first version, completed first version. We won't won't support that. Uh, I'm just going to go through this, I'm going to skip this, they're saying you can use uh, Schottky diode, uh, but that's not as efficient as possibly using P-channel MOSFET. Alright, so essentially if we have 5 volt power supply here, external power supply, we just put P-channel MOSFET and that's it, wire it up like this, simple. Now there's also some other cautions and notes. And again, I say, look, you have to read through this to, and depending on your use case, you need, you need to either worry or not really care about this. Um, this actually reminded me, I, I did this reverse polarity protection a while back, you know, and one of these options, look at that, you know, I did something similar. Um, so I was pretty familiar with, with that setup, uh, essentially. So what I have is, uh, I have what I have lying around. So I wired this up here, but before I go there, I want to go back to the schematic that I showed earlier. You know, when I spoiled the whole fun of going through it, you may have already seen what, what, what's happening here, but like, um, I decided I'm going to use this uh, 7805 linear um, regulator and it's kind of a, you know, it's old, it's, it's everywhere, you probably have it somewhere in your drawer, somewhere, you must have it. Uh, it's not very efficient, but it's, you know what, it's pretty decent for what we need to do, it, do with it, you know. Uh, I'm going to use tantalum capacitor here. The fuck. I, I just went through the data sheet. That that that's all I did. And I'm just gonna find that data sheet somewhere because I closed it. So I have it right here, right? Alright, so you know you just read the data sheet, it's quite simple, you know, you go and just follow what the manufacturer says it's a good thing to do. Now, this is the simplest possible way to do it. Um, I I followed these instructions. Again, CO is not needed. I put a bit uh, bigger capacitor, but minimum is 100 nanofarads or 0 0.1 microfarad. And I see a lot of, uh, you know, schematics out there with just minimum. Fine, you know, you just have a look at that, what what works for you. One of the things that you need to uh, keep mind of is what can uh, this deliver, you know, what is the current that it can uh, source and sync. And uh, one amp is more than we need. We are aiming for 150 milliamps. So I could have probably used something uh, not as uh, powerful as this one. Okay, so as I said, different... There might be different manufacturers, different uh, maximum currents, different, different all this, but in the end, they're pretty similar to each other. Uh, so, yeah, that's the circuit. Uh, where did I lose my... Yeah, there it is. Easy. Um, as you can see, I added PMOS here. 
very easy, the same as the diagram there. Uh, I did not change anything. I did not invent a wheel or anything, you know. So here, negative center, um, and this is very important because, you know, for our pedals, we normally use negative center uh, power supply. Now, if somebody else wants to, uh, you want to do something similar yourself and it's not related to guitar pedals, you might want to change this. Um, having said that, it's a good idea to put some reverse uh, polarity protection. As I said, you know, you saw that, that previously I, I used PMOSFET, but we need to understand why it was more uh, favorable in that situation before. It, when, when you have a guitar pedal, you want to maximize headroom. Uh, so any drop at the power supply lowers that headroom. So, you know, that, that's the reason why I preferred it here. It doesn't really matter um, as long as it's over minimum input uh, voltage for this uh, regulator, right? So this is the easiest one. Just put a diode and, you know, this gives us uh, reverse polarity protection. Um, this is, that's it. It's really that simple, you know, you, you cover this five volts, go to VSIS, and we need this VBUS connection so we know when you plug in the uh, USB, it seamlessly, you know, carries over. So, um, for P-channel MOSFET, I used IRF the uh, IRF 9Z24. Uh, it's a quite big uh, one, so let me show you. I, I kind of have, this is from last time, right? Uh, this is new, um, it's pretty small. I added LED here, so we see that something is happening, you know, like that's mandatory for any of these uh, um, demos to show something visually. This is, I wanted to say striking, but it's not going to be visually striking at all. Uh, I have this linear regulator, I have the my, my P MOSFET. Um, Pretty big, it's power MOSFET, but it's, you know, it's super efficient. It has uh, on resistance is really tiny. It's like 0 0.2 ohms, so, you know. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, I'm just gonna plug in my uh, power supply. Okay, where's that? As you can see here, and we should get this party going. And you can see here, the LED lit on. Um, I have my USB here, but just it's not uh, plugged in. It's not powered, so I'm just gonna keep it out of the way, uh, so we know that when I plug it in, it, you know, I'm gonna plug it into computer on one end, and you know, when I plug it in here, it will be plugged in, so we know that. But as you can see, it works. The output, uh, output current. Uh, output is there. Now, this is not very useful because, you know, this LED is, I, when I was doing this, I was like, okay, it might be useful, but it's not really. So when I plug in my USB, stays the same. You have to realize that this, this is, this uh, wire is VSIS, so system voltage, and this here is actually at 5 volts coming out of USB. So it won't make any difference. And you saw there was nothing there. Uh, I, I plugged it, it was seamless, you know? Uh, and uh, the firmware is there from the previous, when we, we were play, playing with the uh, uh, pulse width modulation, so I kind of unplugged things, so it's not. But, you know, the whole point is here, this one is, is, is on. Um, how do we check whether, it's, it, it, it's very hard to say, you know, who is supplying power here? Is it USB? So I put this little resistor here, it's only 10 ohms, just purely for a demo. So if I put here to my uh, 2000 millivolts or two volts here, and I hope you can see, I'm just gonna uh, measure voltage drop across this, and if I can just get to it. And it's zero. It's zero. So, so there's no current coming through here. And of course, when I, yeah, I just, when I do this, kind of a 
thinks it has something there. But like, there's no current here, right? So I'm gonna unplug this. And I'm just gonna measure here. So there's 220, 220 millivolts. So that, that's 22 milliamps going through that resistor. Now, I, I think this is, I'm not sure if this is how big this uh, resistor is. I think I put 1K there. So through this uh, LED, there's only um, two milliamps going through. So I, I said 22, what does that mean? Well, my Pico is consuming about the rest of it. It's 20 odd milliamps, you know. And I know we said power consumption. I mean, this is, I suppose, 20-ish milliamps uh, is what it's consuming when it's at very, you know, very idle because it's not doing much. It's actually not doing anything at all. Um, so that's it. I mean, this is the final schematic we're going to go with. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna do this final, you know, I have some uh, enclosures I was thinking to use and uh, I'm rummaging here through my, through all the junk I have here on my desk in background. So, okay, so, you, you know, I have a few here that I can use next time, but like, we're gonna cover that at, at some later stage. I don't know when I'm gonna to get to that, but at, at this stage, we have everything there. We have firmware uh, from previous time that we used, uh, have a look at previous videos. So uh, the final thing is really, we, we want to keep uh, power consumption low. So when it comes to this here, I think we, we got pretty much everything. We're gonna have maybe up to three milliamps here. Uh, we're gonna have a couple of milliamps here. So that's, you know, what, five. This one is going to consume 20-ish you know, 30, this is all, I'm um, back with an envelope uh, calculation, take it with a pinch of salt, but like, we are talking about uh, roughly at the highest uh, power consumption, this is like 90 milliamps. So I'm pretty certain with all of this, the rest of it, uh, and there's also some uh, current consumption here, it's going to be up to, I, I think five or six milliamps, I'm not sure, uh, for this one. Uh, this is all, tiny consumption here, uh, this is, there's some inefficiency here. So we are talking about like, what, 25, 30, let's, let's call it 30 milliamps, 30 to 50. So that's pretty good for a very, uh, I would say advanced pedal. So let's try to complete this at some stage and uh, then it's only software and we're gonna try to do different things with that software. So I hope, this all makes sense and the next time I'm gonna just combine this into a pedal. Until then.